Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here at the SDN NFE World Congress 2019 in The Hague in the Netherlands. Mm. And I'm talking with Oliver Cantor, Associate Director of Verizon Global Products, Verizon Business Group. Mouthful. It's yes. a mouthful, but yeah. we know what it means. Thank well, you, you very do. much. Yes, <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Good to see you. And you. Oliver, thanks for talking to us. Um, can I start with this one? Yes. Why is cloud native attracting so much attention just now from CSPs? And what technologies are generally acknowledged or seem to be mm. beneficial to them and mm. how? Well, cloud native is important as um, much of the uh, promise of the cloud is what we're moving towards in network. Um, you know, cloud, um, the utility, the usability, the portability, scale, performance that you can get from having uh, cloud native software um, is self-evident by the rise in popularity of using cloud resources. So software um, that is cloud native, um, by definition, is going to be easier for us to uh, um, um, use uh, with all those attributes. Um, and network software, which is where we're dealing with as, as, uh, um, as network providers, um, at the moment isn't in that cloud native form. It's all been written by very specialized companies on often specialized hardware. And so the stepping stones really to get there are what's important at the moment. Um, and, uh, but the benefits are you know, essentially obvious from what goes on in the cloud today that you'll be able to, or more importantly our end users will be able to spin up services, be able to move services, ch dynamically change their network, change bandwidth, etc, etc, whatever they need to do uh, in, in much faster time, at much bigger scale and ultimately a cheaper uh, you know, price point. Oliver Cantor, what are the CSP opportunities and associated challenges, let's not mm. forget that, for edge deployments and services? Yeah, so, um, you know, if you look at uh, classic distributed computing, which this all is, you know, um, you always get these waves of, you know, centralization and then distribution. And um, I think that's probably a standard resource model in many industries. Um, we've had this um, cloud, very, very useful cloud um, centralization uh, um, model that's, that's permeated the world and has been incredibly useful. I should add, by virtue of having a global internet network that's up and running and, uh, and provides service, um, one um, doesn't want to underemphasize the importance of having networks there. But um, um, very, very useful economy of scale. It's like the big hypermarket at the edge of town. You can get everything at bulk a lot cheaper there, and that's fantastic. Tons of services provided there, all of the SaaS. Um, inevitably, though, to use that analogy still, people do want the local supermarket. They want, they want less latency. <laughs> they want to, um, um, they want to uh, get what they need when they need it, and um, they don't always need to travel to the edge of town to get that. So edge really is a, uh, a distributing of the cloud model, if you like, um, but across the network. We talk about it being the edge, but where is the edge? You know, it could be right down to the sensors, but it could be all the way back up to, to you know, to, to um, sites, data centers. I think it's a continuum, really. I mean, ultimately, um, concepts like ubiquitous computing have been around for years, where you will get the compute power, the storage power, um, and the packet pro uh, processing that you need where you need it. And um, this is just the next wave in, 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 in the bow wave, really, of, of um, or the sine wave of things changing. Um, but importantly, at Verizon, you know, we um, we're developing 5G. Uh, we've implemented it in the in the US. Um, and with 5G comes in, you know, an enormous opportunity to do things at the in the 5G network, and that will include a lot of edge computing. So we talk about MEC, um, you know, by virtue of building these networks, we will have the capability and the use cases with industry, uh, uh, especially, to do a lot of the computing at the edge of the network. On the challenges side, of course, are all the standard challenges of building out infrastructure, building out compute power, and doing that at scale. You know, it's nothing new for network providers um, to have to do this in different ways. We've been building data centers up and down, scaling different models geographically, regionally, by regulation, you know, all of what I would call the ugly work that maybe some of our competitors in the market don't want to take on. We've been doing this for, you know, 100 years or so. And um, <laughs> so, yes, there are challenges in building more infrastructure, in a, in a, uh, uh, of course, but we're doing it anyway, and that's our that's our daily job, really. How do you think the next few years are going to shape up? Are we looking at a hybrid legacy NFV cloud-native network? Mm -hmm. And if we are, can we manage it? 
Yeah, so it's, it's obviously an evolution. This is, we're talking about, <clears throat> without being unfair to our uh, brothers and sisters in the data center and cloud world, we're talking about uh, a much more complex system, which is real, real world networks. Um, and mm. A, the internet and, and all IP global networks are enormous living organisms, plus all of the, uh, the, the cellular networks. Um, they must evolve over time. Uh, um, they're much bigger and more complex than, um, than having a closed data center, top-down environment. We also are dealing with, in, in, in my part of the business, business uh, networks, enterprise networks. They're probably the most complex and ugly networks you can pretty much get, apart from maybe a few science projects and military networks, you know, here and there that we don't really deal with. They have the most challenging environments with lots of legacy, lots of um, physical, non-physical, uh, um, you know, varying uh, uh, success rates and, and capital funding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we are inevitably, as we move to this software-defined world, and ultimately we would like this cloud-native, this, this cloud-like model for everything, we're going to have to move through some steps. Um, NFV, um, um, that we do at Verizon, you know, we spin up multi-vendor uh, VNFs on white boxes in data centers today. We've, mm. we've moved ahead, um, um, you know, uh, very rapidly. Um, we're going to have to obviously manage and orchestrate those networks. Um, we're going to have to, we still have to today, make sure that we look after the legacy physical networks. And we're going to have to move into the containerized world at the same time, you know. It's... Um, it's all part of managing a customer network, to be honest, when we, we get down to our customers. It's nothing new to us, it's just that some of the technology is changing underneath it. But those problems and challenges have always been there, and uh, you know, I, I, you know, my message is always that you need expertise and experience if you're going to really manage the complexity that you're dealing with here. That was true before, it's, it's, it's more so true in the future. Why are CSPs going through the pain of network transformation with virtualization? Why are they doing it? What's the ultimate benefit to them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all agility. Um, you know, uh, a customer, in a, in a non-agile world, we would very slowly put in hardware, very static. You know, we would do what we've done and continue to have to do, which is dig the roads, put in pylons, deal with regulation, deal with... We still have to do all of the real-world physical things, deal with security, deal with... Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, law, deal with all of the, va the vagaries of each country and each, and each uh, network that we have to uh, implement for our customers. Um, but the world is demanding agility, you know, and uh, so where the classic supply model really for um, telco is based on cost, everyone just wanted cost, mm -hmm. it's now cost plus speed really and agility. Our customers are demanding that we have a network that um, is quicker and faster. The only way to achieve that speed is in software, you know, we talk about moving at the speed of software. Mm. So we have to turn the network into a software definable, a software, an agile um, beast um, um, that's not tethered to the, its, uh, its platform, its architecture underneath. Um, so NFV is you know, the, the, the main stepping stone to, to doing that. Um, cloud native is, if you like, the, the enhancement of that so that it's even more agile and more um, uh, uh, portable and, uh, and can scale and all those attributes that everybody knows. NFV at the moment um, is the first stepping stone to turning network functions into code to get the agility um, that customers need. Oliver, where are we today? We still have the Etsy NFV ISG. Mm -hmm. We still have a repositioned OPNFV project and we've got a brand new common NFVI <laughs> telco task force of which you are a part. Yes. So is this indicative, do you think, of a healthy hmm. NFV community or is it a sign that it's starting to fall behind? Are we, are we getting ill, are you? So, well, I'm pleased you could say all of those, uh, uh, those names to start with. <laughs> Look, um, so am I. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Look, uh, um, standardization, bodies coming together, it has to happen, you know. We're in an industry that um, um, uh, our customers are demanding more of, you know. The digital transformation that's occurring in the world or the importance of digital is growing to, you know, at epic scale uh, now where um, it's, it's uh, very, very important. The whole system is getting more complex, there's more bandwidth, there's more use cases, there's more endpoints, mm -hmm. mobility is, uh, is increasing, and, and you know, that, that's true in the, in, the, in the real economy as well. Um, and so, you know, this uh, uh, collaboration has to continue. So, um, 
If every company, big or small, tries to go it alone, we're never going to respond in time to the customer's needs. So the much needed um, uh, NFVI task force that was formed recently is a big step towards that, I believe. Um, you know, we have to agree on some things, um, even though, of course, in Verizon, we'd like to say that we've already started this. We've gone quite far down the path and, uh, you know, uh, our business heads would say, uh, let's just dominate. The real world is, is, uh, is bigger and more complex than that. We need everybody, the vendors and, uh, and the other uh, our competitors, all to agree at least what the framework to put this software in is. Otherwise, we'll all spend too long building our version of it and doing lots and lots of testing, lots of, lots of integration. Um, and so the standards bodies always reflect that state of flux, if you like, um, until we get to a common trust level, which we're getting to now. Everyone now believes that the, it has to happen. Um, and it's, it's happening at record speed as well you know agreements were signed quicker than ever before to, to bring that task force together which is a good thing and I hope you know that that continues who's on the task force and what's its first task um, that's a good question um, I think its first task is getting a set of specifications out um, that define at least um, um, in, in in building block form the principles that we want out of all NFE software mm. so there's you know there's there's um, there's some, some big steps to take just to get this, the, the code into the kind of uh, size. This isn't fully cloud native, of course, but to get it in the kind of uh, usability, the size, the, uh, the input output, um, the way that it logically will talk to other software, um, just to get a framework so that any, <coughs> any vendor, big or small, knows very quickly what kind of software um, they need to be uh, um, and what kind of standards they need to be working to to define their software. Most software houses, you know, can, can build software in any form they want to, 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 to you know, to some degree, um, but you've got to give them, a, give them a clue as to which way they're going to go and tell them as an industry, go that way. Otherwise, they'll wait and see, you know, what's going to happen here. So. Um, I think you know. I think all of the main players, maybe one or two, uh, aren't. All the main uh, telcos are, uh, are on there. I pause saying the word telco. We try not to define ourselves as a telco, really, a technology company, an integrator, almost. Um, but um, they're all on there except for one or two. Um, some say, you know, uh, I'm talking about challenges. You know, why define another set of standards? Why not go cloud native? Mm. Um, I would say, maybe provocatively, that um, you know this software isn't ready for cloud native yet. You know, Kubernetes and other forms of cloud management software. It's we have a few years before that. You know, we've tried it, we've tested it. I mean, I, I'd go as far as to say, at Verizon, we've we've done more in the work of looking at how ready this uh, network software is um, than many, um, it isn't ready. Uh, you need to do things that um, are very specific to the way that they handle packets. You need to pin resources. You need to do a lot with this code. You need an NFVI architecture um, as a stepping stone before we uh, really get to that cloud native. And look, if cloud native um, software becomes available and is usable at the same time, we'll just integrate that into the, uh, into the ecosystem as well. Good answer. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you.